Hello. Okay, this isn't really a how-to video. This is more of a uh, what it is after I went uh, fishing today, and what I call fishing is just basically doing a little bit more exploratory uh, research on some areas of interest that you know I don't have that much exposure to, but I just kind of wanted to check it out. Um, I subscribe to a few online courses or online sites for training, and I also check out lots of blogs. Um, I just recently took a, uh, a lab exercise on Linux Academy, um, things of that nature, and I wanted to kind of uh, take a look and see what AWS step functions were all about and why we would use them and things of that nature. Um, I do know at the workplace, um, you know, where I work, uh, AWS is is used heavily um, and certain areas I'm not very much involved with and all that, but um, I attend a lot of the show and tell sessions and uh, recently in the past week or so, there was a presentation done on step functions and without giving away any proprietary secrets and such like that, um, the company is using step functions to provision certain, shall we say, things, if you will, when uh, people sign up for services within the company. So that's really about all I can say um, without giving away too much in the way of secrets. But um, they use step functions and kind of explaining, and although not really going into tremendous amounts of detail, um, step functions are basically another service within AWS. And as you can see, I got one here, so I was just kind of playing around um, through a course. But step functions are kind of like a workflow. They're like a state machine. Um, if you're familiar with Windows workflow, you can kind of think of it, of it that way. Um, I have a, an example of a step function right here called Reminder. And if you click on that, um, you can see an execution path. Although that may not really tell you much at this point, the definition part itself does. So if you take a look at the definition of the step function which was created, it's composed of two parts actually. Um, actually, it's uh, you've got the visual designer right here, or the visual, shall we say, GUI, and then you have a JSON file which defines uh, tasks that can be run sequentially or you can define a group of tasks that run in parallel. And so without, um, you know, really going into, again, too, too much detail, this particular step function right here starts here. So it's kind of like a state machine where you have a start point. Um, this, this particular workflow is going to go ahead and send a message um, to a destination uh, either one of three ways. It's going to send a message via email or it's going to send a message via text using uh, the SNS uh, notification service, simple notification service. And by the way, the email reminder is going to use the SES, which is a simple email service, or it'll send it to both of them in parallel, which you can see right here. So there's three different paths of execution and it's based on how you choose to run it. So let me kind of go into a little bit more detail on you know, what that is and what it's comprised of, per se. Um, let me just go right here back to where we were, go to the definition, close this out, get a little bit more room. So you can also do it this way or you can do the split screen thing right here. So again, what you're looking here in the JSON, and the JSON is what you would actually define <clears throat> uh, for the state machine. You can almost think of it as a cloud formation template uh, such that it accepts pr incoming parameters, but unlike uh, code for infrastructure, this actually is kind of like code for workflow. So as you can see, Right here, we've got a uh, start at, and these are kind of reserved uh, for its step, step function right here. So we actually want to start at the send reminder state. 
uh, right here. So you've got the send reminder state, and this is also reserved. So you're going to have an array of states, and you're going to have each entry in the array is going to be a state unto itself. So if you look right here, we've got the send reminder. We also have the choice state, which it progresses to. As you look here in the send reminder, we are actually waiting for a number of seconds. This is actually coming in as a parameter. And after it waits for, this is a type, which is a reserved word as well. And a choice is a type of dropdown um, with select choices, if you will. Um, so if you wait for n number of seconds, and after the n number of seconds elapse, you go to the choice state, which is right here. And then what we do in the choice state is we do an examination of the preference parameter. And so where I'm getting with this is I can kind of uh, show you a static website from the uh, online training course, basically. Um, and as you can see right here, um, here's our choices right here. So we've got both email and SMS. And then we also have a, um, you know, our email and our, and our phone number right there. So what we've got going on here is, let's go back to the step function. Um, those get passed in as parameters. So getting back here again, if you click email, the choice preference variable is going to be set to email. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna to go to the email reminder. If it's SMS, it's gonna to go to the text reminder, which is what we've got right here with SMS. And then if it's both, it's gonna go ahead and do both, which is both reminders, which is an array right here. It's like kind of like an array of substates. So let's take a look at each uh, of the steps. So when we do the email reminder, we've got a task that's gonna be executing. And by the way, the task itself that's being executed is a Lambda function that is written. So if we go to, let's go to our Lambda right here. Uh, go to our Lambda service. So we've got a couple going on here. We've got an SMS one. We've got an email one. So let's take a look at this. So basically, we've got our email one right here, which has code. And yes, that's uh, my email reminder right there. There's uh, It's going to SES. Um, and then of course, we've got another Lambda function, which is sending out uh, an SMS notification using the, um, using the Bodo Python 3 library to send out a text. So one second here as I try to show you that. Let's go back to our Lambda. There's our SMS function. And as you can see, we're uh, extracting the phone number um, with the country code and we're using the SNS library for Python and we're publishing that notification which is gonna go ahead and send out a text message to you. Um, so that's our text reminder. And then we have both and this is kind of interesting. If you look, these these two task types are, or types are known as tasks and then for the parallel one, if you will, that type is parallel. And here's another hard-coded reserved uh, word, which is like an array of things, if you will, states to run in succession. So right here you have a real email reminder parallel, um, which is going to invoke the Lambda function. Again, that's got to be a type task. And then you've got the text one, which is a type of text. And, and so it's going to wait for that. Um, and at the very end of that, after it runs it, it calls end, which is going to progress to the very next state, which is next state. So basically, and you look at what is next state, and state, and the next state is state. I can't even talk, but the next state is a type of pass. So you can look in the documentation for that, but that just basically says this whole workflow executes properly without any errors. Um, the default state, which is like an error, if any error occurs, if you will, per se, um, our type is going to be a failure. And getting back to our step functions right here, um, you've got a history of the executions. 
So let's take a look at that. So these are all the different times that I've run it. Um, as you can see, we've had a couple of succeeded ones. We've got some failures going on right here. As you can see, it failed in this particular step because I had a little bug um, in the Python script per se. So it, it basically, um, you know, you can debug this and troubleshoot this. Um, it'll actually go to your CloudWatch logs where you can get a more detailed description per se on, you know, what your given errors were and what happened for right here. We've had this invalid parameter value, as you can see right there. So that was something that I was fixing. But what, what also makes this very interesting, and so this is a state machine, you might be uh, wondering, yes, you can go ahead and run this manually um, just by clicking on this per se, and you can start the execution on that and you can actually insert your JSON block here, which would be your parameters. Now, one of the ways to actually test that is um, by opening up Postman, as you can see right here. So here's the endpoint, and so you're asking yourself, what is that? Um, and I can be about to show you that in a second right here. Um, but as you can see, um, we are issuing a post request to this endpoint with this raw JSON. And that's kind of what you would insert right here if you were going to test this out. So, and where this also gets interesting is you would create an API gateway like in production per se. So here's the actual endpoint itself right here that we are calling. So you can call this endpoint from anywhere. It's just a, a REST endpoint with these arguments. And as you can see, um, it goes through, let's go through and take a look at um, what this is actually doing. So if we take a look at, uh, go to resources, go to our post for the API gateway. As you can see, here's the endpoint. Notice right here, so the arguments are coming in through here and it's actually invoking a Lambda in this case for this given step function. And notice right here, we are calling API handler. Um, and this API handler is a Lambda function, which has a lot of uh, goodness right here. So here's our, um, here's our uh, step function ARN. And so this step function ARN is basically a reminder, this one right here. What we are doing from this API gateway when you call that REST endpoint through Postman or through any automated process, it goes through this whole flow and it's gonna call this API handler, Lambda function, which is that Perl function. And then it takes the results, the output of that, and it sends it back. But that function itself, if we go there, is this one right here. So it's using the step functions, Boto3, which is a Python library client, and it's extracting goodness from the uh, JSON. If you can see right here, we've got wait seconds, message, preference. And if you take a look at that, that's coming from the input body, which is being passed in. Um, and at the very end, it is invoking the step function itself through the uh, through the lambda, and it's done right here. So this given lambda function is basically pulling out the step functions API, and it is executing. And these are the arguments you're passing in. So here's where we've got that ARN SFN ARN, which I pasted right up here, which is our reminder, and you can get that this value right here comes from here, which is our step functions. So when we go right here to our step functions, that right there ends up getting passed in. Oh, I'm kind of uh, going all over the place. And that kind of gets passed in right here. And so we execute that step function. Um, so that's one example right here of having an API gateway call that, um, that Lambda. And you can call it from another, from a, a variety of ways. As a part of this given exercise and all that, we also had uh, 
it's like a penguin site where you would type in information. Now I'm not actually going to type in my phone number. The one that showed up earlier is not really my phone number, but here you can type in your email and then your phone number with the country code, one being the United States. And when you type in those two pieces of information, you can select how you want it to be sent right there. Um, and then basically it'll go ahead and execute and it'll go ahead and execute that given step function. As you can see, we've got an execution history right here. And so I can assure you that I did receive some text notifications on my phone with the message that I typed in right here, um, which is this one right here. And then here's your country code right up there. Um, and so I kind of hope that this gave you an indication at least, you know, again, it wasn't a how to, but I hope it kind of gave you a high level overview of what step functions are and what they can be used for. They're, they're quite useful and just kind of think of step functions as like a workflow where you have a JSON input, which has reserved words of types, tasks, you have to put it in this order and you can call various um, resources. One thing that's kind of cool right here is if I do an edit, so let me do an edit on this one. If I go ahead and delete this, as you can see right here, the code completion shows you the various things that you can do with the step function. So you're not restricted to just calling Lambda functions. You can actually invoke several of these glues, ECS, you can you know, run task containers. You can do something to DynamoDB when you hit this. So the key there is I just wanted you to know, well, we've got, we've got a, a lightning storm going on out there. Um, but I just wanted you to know that you can invoke not just uh, lambdas, but other things within the type of resource. So having said this, I will go ahead and delete all of my resources and the step function itself. I hope this helps a little bit. And, you know, if you run across step functions in AWS, you'll at least know that each of these individual steps, you know, are connected by a sequence within your workflow and each individual step itself can invoke lambdas do something to the database call SageMaker, and all that so workflow just kind of glues all these individual steps together i like to think of it you know coming from you know a windows background as well as a unix background i, um, I kind of like to, to think of it as almost like ssis or even the olden days of windows dts packages things of that nature where you can do all kinds of various things um, with each of these steps. So it's almost like an ETL, but not necessarily an ETL because basically you're wiring code together, um, however you want to have it called or what have you. Uh, so thank you for watching. I hope this helps and you have yourself a, uh, a great one. So take care.